Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Merry Christmas if you're listening on Christmas Day. I know you guys are going to be traveling soon. Uh, But from Christmas all the way up till January 6th, uh, I will be providing 24-hour turnaround on letters of intent. So if you need help uh, one-on-one with your letter of intent and just want to get it out of your hair and get it fixed and get it back to you, uh, I can now do that in 24 hours. I've kind of gotten through the big wave and uh, I'm comfortable now saying from uh, January or December 25th to January 6th, uh, I can return it to you in that time. I wanted to talk a little more about the Google Doc I talked about in the last episode and how you can kind of get your mindset ready for uh, some of the dates that you're going to need to think about in terms of your uh, appies and getting permission from your preceptor. And it's always good to ask ahead of schedule and just say, hey, you know, I've kind of looked at the Google Doc and uh, it looks like a lot of the people were getting their interviews in January and February. I just want to know if we could sit down for a couple of minutes and kind of talk about what that would look like uh, and how I can make sure to get my hours in and, and do what I need to do. Some colleges have already thought of this in advance and they've set it up so it's a six week block instead of five weeks so there's some flex in there so that you don't actually miss days and uh, that's pretty smart thinking Uh, but that's for kind of some of the schools that have really high numbers of their students or really high percentage of their students applying to residency but what you can do is if you look at the tabs on that google doc and go back to last year and even the year before that Uh, You can start to see where some sites tend to do their interviews. Are they a group that really just gets them out of the way late December, early January? Or are they a group that really maybe waits till beginning of February uh, to start getting those interviews in? And I think the Google Doc can be a useful document. And by kind of knowing where those interviews should be, you can kind of say, okay, well, the expectation is that the interviews shouldn't be till you know third week of January. So right now I can just focus on my appies. If there's any projects that need to be done, you kind of forward those and kind of do those ahead of time if you can so that when it comes time and you get those interview emails, and I know they're very exciting, uh, then you're in good shape. Now, Brandon Dyson, who is of TLDR Pharmacy, and I wrote a book, 100 Strong Residency Questions, Answers, and Rationales, and uh, we hired some pretty amazing voice talent to help us out with it. And uh, one of the guys, he's from Ireland originally, and uh, he does part of the question, and then Mike Lenz, who's a pharmacist up in uh, upstate New York, uh, does the uh, reading and we kind of had them go back and forth to keep you engaged through it is a hundred questions so uh, keep you engaged but uh, I've actually had people that have gone through and actually answered every single question but what it'll do is in the meantime as you're kind of going back and forth to work uh, you can listen to that audiobook and listen to 10 questions at a time and that's how it's set up it's meant to kind of give you 10 questions think about them maybe ask your preceptors are they really going to ask that or what do you think about this answer to that question? And then you kind of get some conversation going and some back and forth. Or if you prefer, I think the ebook is like nine ninety nine or something like that. So uh, definitely not very expensive. And the way and Amazon now that we're past Christmas, you can get your book in a day or two uh, if you want a print copy. Uh, but let me talk a little bit more about that. So uh, as you're kind of finishing up your documents and getting in and you have this kind of lull in between uh, what you're doing now, finishing up your appies and the next rotation and then figuring out what you're going to do about interviews, uh, it becomes kind of a, a waiting game in some ways. But I think that what you really want to start doing is start thinking about, okay, well, The preceptor who I would probably work under at this site that I think I've got a pretty good chance at is uh, generally doing anticoag and hypertension. So let me start studying for the NAPLEX and cardiology. Mm, I think I'm going to be doing critical care, and uh, I know the person is really interested in, in peds and NICU, so let me get that part of the NAPLEX done. 
And it may seem like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep that RX prep book as a doorstop until it's actually time. <laughs> but what I find is right now is actually one of the best times to kind of just start taking some of those down. So I want to say there's 60 or 70 chapters that you're going to have to get through. And instead of saying, okay, I've got this huge book, I'm just not even going to do it. Just pick a topic or two that would be valuable as you're going through these interviews and just start going through some of the questions and then start going through some of the content. And it's going to be like Celine Dion's song. It's going to all come back to you now. And I've heard this over and over again is as they are preparing for these interviews, uh, it's actually like studying for the Netflix because they are given a certain topic and then they be try to make themselves very, very knowledgeable about that topic. Now, I, I have the interview course, which uh, explains the point system. It's a three hour block of material that really gets into the nitty gritty about how you score points in the interview. And then, of course, how you score points to get there in the first place. But more importantly, the first thing you have to figure out as soon as you get a question, whether it's virtual or in person, is this a factual question or is this a star question? And when we when we talk about uh, those kind of situational questions, uh, there is a way to answer it, but it takes practice and it takes time to kind of say, OK, well, let me figure out what all the aspects of the star and the mnemonic are. And let me practice answering, you know, okay, let me set up the situation. What I usually see happening is that people move so quickly from the situation to the result, you took the story out. And what these poor residents and RPDs want is, look, man, I got seven interviews today. Tell me a story. Make me laugh. Make me cry. Anything but telling me how you want to work at the top of your license. Anything but you wanting to express your interest and how you met us at the residency showcase. Give us some story. And the setup is so big when you talk about it, but you get so nervous, you just want to be like, and then I fixed everything. And that doesn't make for much of a story. There's a podcast I used to listen to, EO Fire, Entrepreneur on Fire. And one of the things he does, not only to make the story engaging, but to make sure that he has consistency in his episodes, is he always says, what was your worst failure? And at first you might think, oh my gosh, that is not something I want to talk about. When I hear the word weakness, the first thing I'm going to do is say, my weakness is that I work too hard, right? And that's not what they want to hear. What they want to hear is, man... If you failed at something, tell us. You know, you failed a class. You had to repeat a year. Uh, the two people I know that had to repeat a year have phenomenal jobs, like amazingly in line with what they love to do because that extra year allowed them some time to really kind of go out toward that part of things. Uh, one was political science, one was computer science and come back and now they were just kind of this great hybrid and it was amazing so it takes a little bit of opening up and if you're an introvert that might be tough but what i'm saying is is if you have a genuine failure and you have a genuine comeback story who doesn't like to watch rudy right so i'm just telling you as we're we're kind of thinking about these couple of weeks that are coming up and and you've got some extra time uh, what you're going to want to do is kind of predict what kind of um, what kind of story you want to tell, and get good at telling that story, and do it in the star method where you're sitting there and you're you're doing all of the things in the right order, setting up that story, talking about the tension that was there, kind of figuring out like how did you you know overcome that how did you overcome the situation and then what was the result and 
if you have a bunch of residents that are sitting there, they're kind of on their phones and uh, they're, you know, clearly not engaged in your story, then you might take it personally, like they're not interested in me, but they're busy and, and they're like, okay, well, the last person, the person before that, blah. But you can come up like the gladiator, you know, are you not entertained? All right, well, I will entertain you. I will tell you a story. I will tell you something that will make you cry, that will make you sad, that will make you happy. What you want to do, and I hear this over and over again, what can I do to stand out? And as soon as I say, well, you're going to have to take a risk, like, whoa, hey, hey, I said stand out, not, not lose the chance at this. But really, when you talk about failure, and you are probably going to get a lot more heads nodding than when you talk about how you just work so hard and that's just really getting in the way and you should just, you know, and then they'll start talking about burnout. So that that's not what you want. What you want is somebody that's going to be engaged in your story, excited to hear from you. So again, I'm always happy to help uh, whether you're doing PGY2, uh, whether you're doing uh, those supplemental essays, which I know can be a little bit tricky, uh, and or you're getting ready for the interview. And uh, I think that you should, regardless of if you're going to get one or not, I know that, you know, that I talk about the Hunger Games and how 1,600 people of the 8,000 will be immediately eliminated by never getting an interview. But by preparing for the interview, uh, whether you go to residency or something else, it will be valuable for you. And as you're kind of starting to talk about these things with other people, you're going to find that the opportunities sometimes come out of nowhere. You're like, really? That hospital's hiring? No residency? Well, they kind of really just need somebody. Oh, all right. Well, let me do that. Okay. So again, TonyThePharmacist at gmail.com if you need to hear from, if you need to talk to me directly or uh, residency.teachable.com. You want to sign up again, uh, 24 hours. I can turn it around just send me the LOI, send me the CV, send me the link, uh, and I'll get it done for you.